In this video, I'll be experiencing Korea's cheapest barbecue. I cannot get over the fact that all of this costs $13. After that, I'll be experiencing Korea's most expensive barbecue. This is going to be the most expensive restaurant you're going to find anywhere in this country. But let's back up. Right now, I'm in the city of Busan, South Korea, the second biggest city in all of Korea. Busan is a fantastic place to try seafood. Now, already, we have had a lot of that. <laughs> but no matter where you are in Korea, you are never in the wrong place to try barbecue. There is nothing better than Korean barbecue. Meat served to your table raw. Is that for me? And then you get to do the cooking. And even better, you get to do the eating. Oh. Mm. Awesome. In addition to being delicious, Korean barbecue is also very wide-ranging. You can get unlimited all-you-can-eat buffet-style barbecue for just over $10. But you could also spend up to hundreds of dollars on barbecue if you're looking for the top-quality stuff. Today, we're going to experience both ends of the spectrum. Let's move. Well, welcome to our first destination. This place is called Manso, and they have an insane buffet deal here. $16,900. That is a little bit less than $13 for all you can eat meat. Let's go inside and check it out. Yeah. So I just ordered from the menu right here. There are two different types of buffets you can do. Pork buffet or a beef buffet. But if you're trying to save money in Korea, you're going to be eating pork. What's nice is they initially bring you a bunch of side dishes. Then if you want refills or if you want more, you can go get it yourself. We've got a salad, some onions, kimchi, garlic, some junk sauce, and more. I don't know how a place like this makes any money because that is incredibly cheap. Oh my God, look. Remember earlier I was trying to figure out how they afford these low, low prices? Well, it turns out it's because they don't have to hire humans. They have robots serve over the food. Here we have some gipsol, mushrooms, pork skin, some moksol, lots of different dishes. Thank you, robot. You did well. Leave. How do I need it? Stroke you or something? I gotta say, similar personality to our actual server. They were both wearing a mask, I could tell them apart. Right now we have our meat, we have the side dishes they brought us. I'm gonna get some of my own side dishes and we're still waiting for the fire. It's a lot that has to come together to make this work. Let me show you what they got here. All you can eat of everything. First of all, a big old glooping container of samjang sauce. Here we have a classic Korean Italian pasta. So that's elbow macaroni, mayonnaise, and corn. Very nice. Here we have garlic, kimchi, onions with soy vinegar sauce, some pickled radish, more onion, green onion, and then we have even more stuff on this side. I've never seen this at any barbecue in Korea before. Different flavored salt. We have wasabi salt, garlic salt, curry salt, and Himalayan salt too. On this side, some vegetables to put on the grill. Squash, zucchini, potatoes. Chilies, three different types of greens. We have a plant called bracken, which I've never even heard of before in English. I'm gonna scoop up some side dishes, sit down, and let's eat. Right here we have the most common, affordable meat you're gonna find in all of Korea. It's called samgyeopsal, and it is the pork belly. Freedom! It's kind of like a thick bacon, except for it's not cured. All right, our first course is right here. It's looking crispy and delicious. I'm just gonna hit it with some wasabi salt. I've never had wasabi salt before. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Oh, I've got, it is just bursting with porky goodness. The wasabi salt is not a strong wasabi flavor, but I like it. It's creative, it's interesting. Here's how I would typically eat something like this. A little bit of garlic, maybe some onions, a little bit of kimchi, some junk sauce. Then we put in our meat, and that right there is like a little flavor package ready to go to heaven. Oh man, that's heaven. The thing with Korean barbecue is if you find a good place with the right side dishes, you don't need expensive meat. I could just eat this samgyeopsal and be pretty satisfied because I can mix and match it with so many different flavors. This is our second course right here. They actually brought us some thinly sliced beef. Putting that beef directly over that pork fat, now that is haram. I can't wait to try it out. So I've got my beef right here. Looking crispy, fatty, delicious. Cheers. Oh. Uh -huh. It doesn't even have to be a good cut or a good quality cow. This could be a cow that did drugs, that was homeless. What's important here is they've cut the beef so thin, it's impossible for it to not be tender and melting in your mouth. Sorry, I was supposed to say an unhoused cow. Now the cows will not be offended. We have a few more cuts here. These are both neck meat. This is just like a Vienna sausage. I'm not gonna get into that, but this right here is skin. Now the skin has already been cooked, so we need to recook it to get it crunchy over the fire. Our pig skin is finished. It's popping like popcorn. This is a peanut powder. You're supposed to just put a bit on there. That's gonna give it a peanutty flavor. Cheers. 
It's delicious. The peanut dust gives it like a little bit of an earthy flavor. I think the star of this dish is how gummy the skin is. Like eating sheets of collagen. Oh yeah, that's good. So this has been our inexpensive location. To me, it's unbelievable. Less than $13 for all the meat you can eat. There are a ton of sides up there. The meat is delicious. There's service from robots. What more can you ask for? Let's find out. Because next we're gonna go to the most expensive Korean barbecue I could find in this country. You ready? Let's go. Alas, we've come to our final destination, the most expensive restaurant we could find here in Busan, perhaps the most expensive in all of Korea. Nani? I'm talking a place that dignitaries go. Presidents, popes, Russian gangsters. What stands out to me first is that the building from the outside looks really boring. Because real wealth knows when it's rich. It doesn't have to show off. You look at Flava Flav compared to Mark Zuckerberg. One of them wears a t-shirt and has billions of dollars. This is barbecue like you've never seen before. Let's get into it. First thing I notice as I walk in is a huge wall of their wine selection. Now, almost every place you get barbecue in Korea, they're gonna have beer and maybe different types of soju, but it's not that common to find a big wine selection. So I'm really excited about that. Let's keep moving. Here is the meat. So there's a guy inside. This guy is a maestro with the meat. Come take a look at the way this meat has been cut. Do you see how it's like a lattice shape? It looks fantastic. And it's gonna make it even more juicy and even more delicious after it hits that grill. From here, we're about to head to our private room. Let's go. We are inside, I've got the menu, and this thing is a beauty. Immediately, I'm drawn to the prices. For example, this, a T-bone steak is 75,000 won. That's not too bad, and then you realize that's for 100 grams. It's not that much meat. A pound of meat here would cost around $250, $300. Pretty expensive. We're not starting with the meat. I'm gonna start with a drink. I'm gonna get a bottle of wine, because it is noon on a Monday. Then, I'll be able to make a decision about what to grill. The panjang has arrived. These are our little Korean side dishes. Oh, wow, really beautiful. And then this right here is going on the fire immediately. That looks like a welcome bite. Oh, and there's the wine. I've never had wine, but no wine opener. Maybe she went to go get that. Maybe it's up to me. All right, I've got a chopstick, a wine glass. I have a spoon, I have a cup. How can I open this wine bottle? Boom, we've got our wine open. It's brilliant. Let's try out some of the food they brought here. First of all, here, this is a yukjeon, a meat pancake. Let's try it out. Crunchy mm -hmm. and delicious. Here, I think this is an egg. Let's try that. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Let's try some of this right here, our first real taste of meat. I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of salt and pepper. Salty, it's a little sweet, it tastes of soy sauce. That's how you make someone feel welcome. I don't need someone to pour my wine for me. I need someone to bring a little tiny boiling bowl full of meat. This is a great way to start the meal. From here, I'm gonna order my first course. And before I even get something to grill, I wanna order caviar, and I wanna order Korean-style raw beef. You quit. So it turned out they don't actually have the raw beef here, but what they do have is cow foot jelly. And that's what this is right here. I mean, just take a look at that. You can see the texture of it is so bizarre. It's like a jelly that they made from boiling the cow feet. Cheers to cow feet. Mm. It has like a meaty but jello -y, sticky texture to it. Funky but lovely at the same time. Now, this is a Russian caviar, so that's how you know it's good. Do I have mixed feelings about supporting Russia during this time? I'm mainly focused on the caviar, so no, I can't say I do. Cheers. That's really nice. A little briny, fatty, sticky. I would say very decent quality. From here, I want to order some meat to finally put on the grill. You'll see soon. Right here we have beef brisket and beef tongue. 100 grams of each, so you can see it's not a lot of volume. She's put clay plates onto the burner and then she's just kind of glazed it with a little bit of fat. All of the brisket goes in. Here, this is some sort of kimchi that she puts on. Now she's taking the beef and actually wrapping it around the kimchi. Some kimchi inside, beef on the outside. Cheers, my first bite. Oh yeah, kimchi is so fermented and almost stinky. The beef is so oily, but it tastes incredible. This is real wasabi. 99% of the wasabi that you find in supermarkets is fake. Because the wasabi plant is expensive and it's a finicky plant to grow. The difference is you could eat a clump like this and it's not gonna melt your brain stem. I'm gonna put it on the beef and let's try it out. It's 
decadent, so rich. The wasabi is a nice contrast in flavor. It's so delicious. Oh yeah, cook up that tongue. It only needs 10 or 15 seconds on each side. He said put some of the green onion on there, put some wasabi and some salt and pepper. That tongue is ready for my tongue. Oh, it's so springy. It's like something between a heart and lungs. So that should be pretty relatable right there. I used to get the cow tongue and I used to think like, oh, where was this cow? Who was he licking? Who was he in a relationship with? And then I learned to not think about weird things all the time. From here, I need to bring out the big guns. I am looking for the most expensive thing on the menu. It's gonna be a variety of meats that they choose and it's coming in at 560,000 Korean won. This is such an irresponsible use of company funds. Let's eat some beef. Wow, guys, this is what $423 looks like. I thought it would be bigger, to be honest. You can see the meat is like dark red, tons of intermuscular fats. I cannot wait to sink my teeth into this. We have our first cut right here. This is the eye fillet. It looks fantastic. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a dab in the salt and pepper, throw it back. out the front door. Oh, it's almost like a mini crust. That sear on the outside is so perfect. So this is Hanwu beef, and that's part of why it's so expensive. It is like the Wagyu of Korea. The only thing is, Japan has a lot better marketing team when it comes to their beef than Korea does. Because I've only heard of Hanwu in Korea, and that's it. We're on to our next meat right here. This is the inside skirt. Different from upskirt, which is a type of photography made popular in Japan. I'm gonna give it just a little dab of salt and pepper. Here we go. Mm, not softer, more firm, but definitely more oil and juices popping out too. Really different texture, soft but chewy. What's fascinating here is there are so many flavor enhancing options, but with steak this expensive, you want the flavor of the beef to shine through. And man, let me tell you, it's shining. Right here we have our fourth course. This cut here is known as the beef flap tail. And it seems like it's kind of a trend among food reviewers in Korea to eat some of their barbecue raw. So why not? Cheers. It's not bad. You can feel the fat melting on your tongue. I mean, that's good quality beef. I like it. Very nice. So she did seem very concerned about cooking the steak too much after she saw me eat a piece raw. Get it. It's gonna be my first time comparing the raw version to the slightly more cooked version. Cheers. It's so good. I prefer it cooked a little bit more. This has a delicious buttery taste to it. It is so rich. Every bite you take more of this intramuscular fat is spilling out of the meat and just kind of gliding down your throat. It's like A5 Wagyu. This is A5 Hanwoo. We are down to our final meat. Right here we have Korean ribs. Koreans are the masters of ribs. Because what they do is they take the beef bone, they cut it, and then they slice it until it becomes this long blanket of meat. It's just like an accordion. This looks stunning, it looks delicious. It's the most popular thing they have right here. Time to try it out. Mm, juicy, smoky, and a unique texture that you can only get by cutting it in this very unique way. It's like they created more space for the meat to get exposed to heat, but the juices and the oils start leaking out. And it makes it softer and a little bit more tender as you eat it. That's love. This has been a meat journey. What I can tell you is that this was a delicious experience. Now, aside from being a delicious experience, this is a very expensive experience. This is absolutely the most I've ever spent on barbecue, I think, anywhere, and certainly the most I've ever spent here in South Korea. <sighs> Please don't tell my wife, even though she's filming right now. Babe, ear muffs. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. We had wine, we had caviar, we had meats of all types. How much did I spend today? About $810. That is the most I've spent on just about any food purchase ever. That is wildly expensive. If you had to ask me, is it worth it? No, of course not. I could have Korean barbecue for $20, $30, $40 on the street. That brings me a similar amount of happiness as this, but life is all about a spectrum of experience. I like to experience from time to time the very high end, but mostly I like to hang out in the middle or, you know, with the other white trash or Korean trash in this example. Wait, sorry, I shouldn't include that. That's, I didn't mean it. I'm gonna go take a nap. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A pee. Something's happening. Oh! This is unexpected. It's a 10 million subscriber cake. Thank you so much, Joe. One candle remaining for our final subscriber. 
huge thank you to Joe here for helping support us in this trip. Thank you, my man. Let's play. Joe has been instrumental in making sure we get every location we needed and helping us go to every place we wanted to go. I also want to point out, I got my first subscribers when I lived here in Korea. And then now coming back, I got my 10 million subscribers. So what a wonderful circle. I love it. Glad I could celebrate with you. Boom.